We live in a world faced with crisis, chaos, and confusion. It is clear by the signs of the time that Christ is coming soon. But are we really at the end? What shall we expect as we move towards the final stages of Hurt's history? What does the Bible say about the last day events? Well, welcome to Prophecy Plus as we explore these and other current issues in line with biblical prophecy. God bless you as we study together. All right, God is good and all the time. God is good. Happy Sabbath, everybody. <laughs> Happy Sabbath. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad. It welcome you to Prophecy Plus. Allow me to welcome you to Prophecy Plus, your program of information and inspiration as we uplift you from the Word of God with positive vibrations. We're here with Pastor Harding and myself as we go deeper into Bible prophecy. We're in chapter 9 of Daniel, and we have been having an exciting time studying the Word of God and learning more about what God expects of us. In these times, as you know, Daniel and Revelation are the prophetic books of the Bible, and they are very critical in understanding the last day signs and yeah. where we are going towards the end <coughs> of time as Christ comes to take us home. All right. And so, Pastor, good to have you again. Happy Sabbath. Wow. It's a pleasure to be here and happy Sabbath to you as well. Yes, and yes, what, yes, yes. What an exciting time to, to study the word. Yes. Um, you know, the more we listen and watch what's happening in this country and around the world, is the more exciting it is to study the prophecies. Because as we say every week, the revelations, the fulfillment of prophecy uh, is being unfolded. So That's right. See that. Yes. Well, we are... Exactly. We're right on stream again. We won't be too long today, guys. We're going to be having a short version of this. We're looking at sanitizing the sanctuary, part two. And of course, part three, Pastor, has to be next week as you we fully wrap this thing up because there's so much so much to say, so much to yeah. say about yeah. this um, presentation. But before we start, I'm going to ask you, Pastor, <coughs> to pray for us as we go right into our, our Bible oh. class. Okay, let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word. And thank you for the privilege. Thank you for the honor to study the prophecy of Daniel. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit and his ministry to our minds and our hearts. We ask you now, God, to, to bless the study for this evening. Bless every single listener. And be with Pastor Joban and myself as we are facilitators for this great prophecy seminar. For we pray in your holy name. Amen. 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 Well, Pastor, let's get right into the Word. Let's get right into the Word. We're looking at sanitizing the sanctuary part two, mm -hmm. and we have been exploring more about the sanctuary doctrine and what it means for the sanctuary to be cleansed. And we stopped at Daniel 8 and verse 14, where it says, For unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. We want to backtrack a bit, backtrack a bit to see mm -hmm. um, the, the context to where we're heading. Uh, of course, Romans 13 verse 11 says, No, it is high time to awake out of sleep, for our salvation is nearer than we first believed. That's another key text that we'll be using as we move through these chapters, because we recognize we're in the last days, salvation is full and free, and we're moving on to the last moments where we believe Christ will be putting in his appearing, and we have right. to be ready. We have to be ready. ready. Yes, Pastor. Oh. I was just saying, ready or not, he's coming. Uh, right. We've got to move, yes. Right, right. So we have to ensure that we are ready. Okay, yeah. so we, we're moving into Daniel chapter 8 to go into Daniel chapter 9. And we see Daniel at the uh, prophetic uh, place in his, in, in, in his, in his, in his ministry. Uh, Gabriel shows up to him in Daniel 8 verse 13. And it says in Daniel 8, verse 13, Then I heard a holy one speaking, and the holy one um, said to that certain one who was speaking, to the giving of both the sanctuary and the host to be trampled upon. Now, Pastor, it's very interesting to know about the sanctuary. In AD 70, we know that um, as Christ was talking to his disciples, he was showing them mm -hmm. that, listen, the sanctuary will be demolished, and mm -hmm. there will come a time when there will be no sanctuary. 
And in AD 70, it happened. Um, and this is a part of the, the 70 week prophecy, a part of the 2300 days prophecy. Um, so I just want to give people a, um, a feedback that this actually happened, that the sample was trampled upon. And there was a time where we see in history um, Christ, the fulfillment of Christ, speaking about the center being demolished was was actually happened. And, and the whole idea of the center doctrine is to point us not to the earthly center, Pastor, from Moses' time or even unto the time of Christ, but no, to point us to the heavenly center where Jesus is our high priest ministering in the heavenly sanctuary. So something critical happened in the 2300 days prophecy, which we want to highlight to persons today. Uh, it says here, we move now to Daniel 8, verse 14, unto 2300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So Gabriel did, did say this to, to Daniel, but Daniel didn't understand what he was saying. It was not until he came back, as we learned last week, Pastor, in Daniel mm -hmm. chapter 9, and Gabriel opened <clears> up um, the prophecy to him and, and spelled out the numbers to help him to understand what this prophecy is. But we want to go back again, Pastor, to this question. What is the cleansing of the center? What is the cleansing of the center? And it says here in slide number 11, before we can understand the cleansing, we have to understand what, what was the purpose of the center in the first place from the Jewish time, from ancient Jewish time. Exodus 25 verse 8 says, Build me a sanctuary that I may dwell among men. Psalms, the 77th the division of the Psalms, and verse 13 says, Thy way, O Lord, slide 12, it's in, is it's in, in the, the sanctuary. sanctuary. So in the sanctuary, Pastor, we want to break it down. Um, some persons want to know the, the importance of the different features of the sanctuary. When the sanctuary was built, there was a courtyard, the outer courtyard, and the inner courtyard. The outer courtyard had two things there. The altar burnt offering and the lava pot where the water was to wash the, the, the priest's hand. But to enter into the inner, uh, to enter into the center outer courtyard, you have to go to the door. And we said the door was also symbolic of Jesus Christ. He said, enter in and we can find rest with him. What was the furniture in the courtyard? We have slide number 15. Exodus 29 verse 32 says, And thou shalt burn the whole ram unto the altar, which is the burnt offering. So just about track a bit, Pastor, the priest would be there. The high priest would be the one to be assisted by the other priests. And you would bring your ram or your turtle doves or your lamb without blemish. And you would confess your sins on the lamb's head, we said last week. The high priest would cut the lamb head or kill it the blood would flow and then the body would be burnt on the altar of burnt mm -hmm. offering mm -hmm. the priest would shed the blood on the doorpost or in the holy place on the veil and he would come and then wash his hands in the lavey pot symbolic of oh. baptism that is very important. important but you know pastor the the earth is sanctuary well, it was very critical to the whole plan of salvation. That's right. As God, in his wisdom, uh, decided to direct Moses to build a sanctuary um, uh, as a patterning the heavenly sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And as you just read a while ago, the Bible says, Thy way, O Lord, is in the sanctuary. And right. the earthly sanctuary was like the, the, the center of worship and meeting and praise and cleansing and reconciliation and worship the you know the earthly sanctuary and so the sacrifices as we are going through now were kind of elaborate but it was necessary to show man the process of salvation not what he could do to earn salvation but to right. show what god has done for him so he right and, and that's critical i like what you said about these elaborate um sacrifices the different feast days and the atonement, which, which we are speaking specifically of now, we're looking right. at, not looking at the, the rest, the other feast days and the ceremonial sacrifices. We want to focus on a specific one, which is the day of atonement, where you would have to carry your dirt turtle doves, your your um your rams and your or your lamb with that whatever. specific day where you would seek complete cleansing for the whole year of your sins. Yes. And, and, you was, see, and what happened is that you have to do that. And in order for you to get cleansing, as we said, 
there, right. there, there, there had to be shedding of blood. Mm -hmm. So when the people brought their animals or their doves or whatever, then that animal had to be killed. And the pain and loss of life of the animal is just to show God's attitude towards sin. Right. The evil of sin. Right. And that's why that was only pointing to Jesus. And like I said, I'm glad we don't have to do that now because I don't <laughs> like blood. <laughs> I would have to be dealing with this every day and especially, day. you know, in the day of atonement. Right. And, and it says in, in, this, in this book here, um, which we have been studying, Daniel, yeah. um, it says, let us remember that this earthly center with its, with its offerings of blood animals was, only, was always only a type of shadow Correct. of the heavenly center. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away our sins now. No. But Paul uses now, Paul jumps in, in Hebrews now, the, the, the New Testament revelation of this, of, of, of this Santor system. Paul speaks about the Santor, but he's focusing now on the heavenly one. And he says, no, we don't need the, the old Santor system of the ceremonial law of killing all these rams and bullocks <laughs> in the atonement, the feast days, the fast days. We don't need to be under that old covenant because all these things pointed a shadow of things to come which was jesus christ the true lamb that was slaughtered and the high priest or risen from the grave and in heaven ministering for our sins so that was critical when jesus ascended into heaven after his resurrection he began his work as high priest in a, in a better sanctuary than the old one so paul's thesis in hebrews 8 hebrews 9 hebrews 10 is to show us that we are no longer on the old covenant of the sanctuary system of ceremonial um, sacrifices, but we're now looking towards Christ, who is the fulfillment of this sanctuary system. Yes. And he is now our heavenly sanctuary, heavenly, heavenly high priest, ministering in a better sanctuary, not built with um with man, man. not built with the, 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 the buildings or the material of man. His followers no longer cared about the old sanctuary, but now focus on Jesus, the high priest. That's why Hebrews 8, verse 1 and 2 says, We have such and high uh, priest who is set on the right and the throne of the Father and the majesty in heavens, a minister in the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which, which the Lord pitched and not man. Hebrews mm -hmm. 8 verse 1 and 2. Therefore, just to give the clarity for our, our listeners and watchers, therefore, we can easily understand, the, the sin, understand that since the vision given to Daniel was for the time of the end, um, this vision of the sanctuary, system the 2300 days the center to be cleansed in the heavenly one but it was not the earthly one so this thank you 2300 days was not for the for the old system or, or the center of old not the earthly one but it was it was had to do with the heavenly one heavenly jesus sun. moving from the holy place to the most holy and, place and that is why pastor that is why i love the bible so much because the clarity is given by the bible itself mm -hmm. because um the Apostle Paul came on this side uh, after Christ was crucified. So right. he fully recognized that all the, 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 the blood that was shed from the bullocks and from the lambs, they were only representing Jesus who was to come. So now, um, that's why he spoke about it in Hebrew. We are no longer offering sacrifices of animals because right. we are now relating directly to the heavenly sanctuary. Where that's Jesus right. is the high priest right now, ministering, ministering for us. Ministering for us, right. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And there was an annual service of cleansing. The earthly sanctuary, which is a shadow of the type of cleansing of the heavenly one. It was not a mere cleansing from dust or mud, as when we were cleaning our homes, our own homes. But it was a cleansing from sin. And Hebrews 9 verse 22 says, Almost all things are cleansed by the law, but without the shedding of blood, there, there is, is no, no remission, remission of sin. Let's look back on the slides, Pastor. What three items we found in the holy place? We found three things as we look at the center, the old center. Yeah. There yeah. is the, the seven candlesticks, mm -hmm. the table of mm -hmm. shrewbread. So bread, right. Right. And the holy so, place, the altar of incense. The altar of incense, right. Uh -huh. The altar of incense. The seven candlestick represents the seven churches, the light of the gospel, and the oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. The right. incense was symbolic of our prayers ascending to God. Uh, wow, it's a beautiful, beautiful imagery, Pastor, um, presented in the Holy Place. The, the, the table of shoe bread, the, the bread symbolic of, of Jesus Christ, the bread of life, um, sacrificing his life on Calvary's cross. 
What was in the whole, most holy place? Slide number 26. In the most holy place, slide number 28 says, And thou shalt put the mercy seat above the ark. And in the Ark of the Covenant was the testimony, the Ten Commandments, Aaron's rod, and a cup of manna. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also, just to backtrack one little bit, Pastor, just to add to what you mentioned about the, about the showbread, uh, the bread was also symbolic of God's continued provision mm -hmm. for all of us. Jesus is right. the word of life. But uh, right. the spiritual bread, but the physical bread, supporting and caring for his children. That's you right. Know, that That's was right. also symbolic of that, you know. Right. So mm -hmm. the whole cleansing of the center pastor was not specific to the Old Testament system of Day of Atonement. Although the Day of Atonement was also a time of judgment for God's people, Pastor. Let me yeah, read but, that. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And I was just probably going to read it, but, but, but just to mention here, probably you'll read it. What, what was the purpose of the cleansing? What Right. Was the sanctuary being cleansed from? Is that you're going to read? What right. was the sanctuary being cleansed oh, okay. from? Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead um, slide number 32, Simeon. Slide number 32. You see a paradox of the day of atonement, also the day of judgment. So we see a paradox there on that slide. We see the old system of the high priest cutting the lamb said, but we also see our high priest in the most holy place, Jesus Christ, ministering for us. It's a, it's a, pre, it's a time of the investigative judgment we're living in. But when the, when the time comes when Christ shall put down his, his priestly garment, he's not ministering in our in the sanctuary. He doesn't he has not reached a point of no removing the, 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 the priestly garment. He's presently ministering each time we sin, Pastor. He's ministering in the sanctuary. You know, sure. trying course. to clean, make sure we're clean mm -hmm. and I'm pleading on our behalf. That's what he's doing right now. So it's a, it's a complete comparison with the Day of Atonement, which is done every once per year, where you have, you have, uh, you, <laughs> the, the interesting part is, you as the <coughs> sinner pastor in the Old Testament system, it was much more strenuous because you, it, the, the sinner is the one that did the most things. You have to remember all of your sins. You have to carry all this. It's a, it's a system of works. Yeah, but sure. no, But no, when you go into the New Testament, it's a system of grace. Where Jesus takes the load from us and does all the work. Yeah. In, but in cleansing yeah. us. We, we, yes, grace. We had it before, but it was more elaborate. L Jesus elaborate right came. Right. And I right. just mention here cleansing the, 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 the sanctuary, the physical old sanctuary before Jesus came. Uh, it was cleansing the sanctuary once per year of the accumulated sins of sins. the people. Good, very good. Uh, once per year, the high priest yes. uh, yes, would go good. through all the protocols with the right. land which we are coming to, and then the earthly center was cleansed. But you right. know, as the person seeking grace and salvation, had also to prepare yourself uh, for that cleansing and that um, forgiveness. So the very center was cleansed once per year. Yes. Very good clarity. So when the Bible says, here is the good news, when the Bible says, unto 2,000 trillion of days, then shall the center be cleansed. Included in this great work will be the complete cleansing of the hearts of God's people yes. so that they will fully reflect the beauty of Christ's character. When the work is completed, Satan who was vanquished at the cross will be nullified forever. So this is eternal executive judgment where mm. Christ will forever reign. His people shall be changed towards his likeness and the devil and sin will be forever cleansed um, from, 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 this, from, from, from the place, space of the earth. Also included in the work of the cleansing, the heavenly sanctuary is the work of judgment. In ancient Israel, those who did not humbly repent on the day of um, atonement, what you're talking about, Pastor, in yes. ancient Israel, those right. who did not humbly repent on the day of atonement were to be cut off mm, that from, is the, um, from among God's people. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. is found in Leviticus chapter 23, 29 to 30. Persons who are listening can read that. Leviticus 23, 29 verses 29 to 30. Likewise, no, the paradox is likewise, no, the comparison, sorry, or the parallel. Likewise, at the end of the world, those who have not confessed and repented their sins and their sinfulness, who have not laid their sins upon the Lamb of God and received forgiveness, will not share in the wonderful blessings of the cleansing of the sanctuary. So that is critical. So the sanctuary um, and the cleansing also not only has to do with jesus ministering to us but also the executive phase of the judgment pastor 
where those who will be um, with those who would have accepted Christ would be forever um, saved, and those who re did not repent would be forever lost. Yep, correct. That's exactly so this, right. The, so the cleansing of the sanctuary, um, um, thirty-three, um, brother Simeon, brother Simeon, may have to mute mute your um, your um, your assistant there. The this the so therefore the cleansing of the sanctuary was a day of judgment for Israel, symbolizing in the final judgment. Uh, yeah. Final did, judgment. Did you, did you did you talk about the what was in the most holy place? Are you, are yes. you mentioned yes, that? You mentioned it, the, we said that. The, 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 yeah, the place. The most holy okay. place. We said it after yeah. the covenant. Yes. Yeah, yeah just, just just jumping back quickly. Uh, significantly, we are the Ark of the Covenant. And, and inside the ark, we have the testimony, we have the commandments. Commandments, and yes. The, right. And, and the, um, the lid on the ark was called the mercy seat. Mercy yes. Let's seat. talk about that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't want to skip over that. That's true. And yeah. So yeah, the, yeah. These the symbols mercy are seat. critical. These symbols <clears throat> yes. are critical. So, mm -hmm. so between an offended God and a broken law, an offended God, we have mercy from Jesus. And that's why his blood was shed. We have mercy from Christ. And again, what, what I think about, uh, listeners, is that the Ten Commandment law, written by God's own finger, the sacred decalogue, uh, is the main item in the Ark of the Covenant in the yes. most holy place. Isn't that significant? Yes. yes. That, is, that, that is significant. Powerful. Powerful. Yeah, powerful. That is significant. That's powerful. Yeah. Well, Pastor, we have to cut it short today. <laughs> we do oh, part three yeah. next week. We're getting into it. No, next next week, listeners, we're going to be breaking down the 2,300 days prophecy. We're going to go from 457 BC to 1844 to where we are now. So we're going to break that down. So we want you to ensure that you do your pre-study, your pre-reading, so we can share together in this um, center message. Matthew 26, verse 28, we can close with this text. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many, for the remission of sins, Jesus Christ mm -hmm. says. So we know now that we are not under the old covenant, the old system of the Jewish center, but now we are we are partakers of God's grace and his mercies as he now takes on our sins as a lamp for the slaughter, as he now risen from the grave is now our high priest in the heavenly center ministering for our sins. God bless Amen. you, Pastor. We'll close for today. All right, I know. Because <laughs> we are yeah. I'm rushing to another program. But we will be starting next week at 4 30, as we always start, and we will go deep, deep in yeah. the prophetic ministry. Um, yeah. I think Pastor, you'll be here for lunch with us next week. So we'll have lunch. Go go to this and then we can talk after again. Uh, all right. <laughs> I, I, yeah, before before the prayer, you know, I, I yes. spoke to you earlier on. I was actually on the road because I went to do a baptism. Yes, powerful. We had a baptism today, so so this is this this is this is a great experience that way. Your Lord yes. is in the sanctuary, and the yes. greatest experience that one can have is to commit to Jesus and be baptized as a public expression of right. the person faith in Jesus. Praise God for Paul, right. for Paul. Mm -hmm. Pastor, could you pray for us as we close? Sure. Uh, our God and our Father, we thank you again for this moment. This was a shortened version of our Prophecy Plus Bible study this evening, but uh, we thank you for the information, uh, the inspiration, and how accurate and precise your words are and the fulfillment of the prophecy. Thank you, Lord, for our listeners who continue to join us every week. And I just pray that it will not just be information and inspiration, but may these words and uh, the information that is provided through your Holy Spirit May this reach every heart and draw us closer to Jesus. Bless us now, I pray. Put your hand on each of us as we look forward to meeting again next week for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you, right. bless viewers and listeners. See you next week for the sanitizing of the center, part three. Three. As we continue to look at right. the cleansing we look of forward. the center. God bless right. you. God, God bless, man. Have a good one. Bye-bye.